Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash and my the butthole. If you're new to the channel and love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that subscribe button, maybe that notification bell too, and let's jump straight in to today's stories. Much love, guys. And today's first story, we're starting with Lapisil, who says, am I the asshole for my petty response to my boyfriend's purposeful incompetence about chores? My boyfriend has started pretending to be bad at basic life shit like dishes and laundry, like he can't do it, so I do it. I felt pretty frustrated with that and told him straight up that I knew he didn't forget how to clean since he moved in with me. He was always very competent living alone and I didn't appreciate him forgetting how to do chores. I said that when I asked him to do dishes and he refused and refused until he finally did them wrong, that I was not that stupid. He said he was trying his best and I was wrong for saying he was trying to manipulate me. And that from his perspective, I asked him to do something and he did it as best as he could. And I kept that in because it wasn't up to my impossibly high standards and he couldn't win. And he wanted me to believe him when saying he is trying. Anyway, this might be petty, but I decided to give believing him a try. So he had bleached my favorite little black dress. Instead of getting mad, next time he had a family event, I put it on. <laughs> he asked me if I was really going to wear that. It looked messy. I said that I love that dress and understand accidents happen, so I wasn't mad or upset. It had bleach spots, actually. I thought it looked kind of cool. He said he really thought it looked bad, and I said if he wants, he could sharpie on the white spots real quick in the Uber. It ended up looking even worse. <laughs> Another time we were having dinner and he had done the dishes, but put some of the cups and bowls in the dishwasher upside down so they filled with dirty dishwater. I took those cups and bowls, dumped them out in the sink, but didn't wash them further and served this food in them. He said that it was dirty and I was like, they just came out of the dishwasher. It's just water, it's fine. He said that no, it was disgusting. And I said it was really no biggie. I was getting over my impossibly high cleansiness standards and I really didn't think it was that gross. The last time I had cooked for a work party of his, after cooking, the dish needed to cool for about 30 minutes, then be refrigerated. I had plans with my friends that night and I asked him to put the dish away after it cooled. He forgot. The next morning, he noticed the dish was never refrigerated. I said it was fine, it was just a mistake and it would probably be fine to eat. There wasn't a lot of meat in it. He got frustrated and said, you can't serve meat left out overnight, even if it's only a little. And I said, oh, I think it should be okay. Stuff happens. He stopped being so lazy about chores after he realized I seemed totally okay with leaving stuff done badly and that he'll be living with it. But I feel a little petty for having been dishonest about it. I actually hate how my bleach dress looked and my stomach turns out dirty dish soup and unrefrigerated meat. Am I the arsehole for being petty? Now, I'm going to fly into this one with a definite not the arsehole from me, but I do kind of question is, is this the way you want to go about life? <laughs> I know their relationship might be perfect other than this, but I do question it. You know, that you have to go to these measures to change someone else's behavior, bad behavior. I mean, who puts a cup in a dishwasher upside down, man? That one got me. And I'm not saying you should get rid of the person at all. What I'm basically saying is just tell this person to sort their shit out. <laughs> But Jaded Chip 343 says, not the asshole, you are a genius. It's not petty. It's refusing to let him externalize the cost of his behavior to you. I think it's brilliant and you should keep doing it whenever this comes up. If he's truly being willfully incompetent, you'll get the results you see here and he'll have to cut the shit out. If it's an area where it is truly your higher standards, you'll see that when he doesn't care and you'll be able to decide what to do with that information. Well done. Iris says, why didn't you just dump him? Rather than being petty, upgrade yourself. Not the arsehole. Karski Pella says, the white spots. Oh, Joe, just put bleach in the wash with it. I think it came out looking great. The Sharpie marker to try and cover it up was his idea too. At his family event. Tell him all what a goober. <laughs> He's big. I love it. Not the arsehole. I love it when people call each other goobers. An OP replies to that saying, lol, it actually went down a little like that. His mum said that she thought I spilled something on my dress and offered me a napkin. I said, oh, actually, boyfriend spilled some bleach on our last load of laundry a few days ago. Just a little mistake, but he tried to cover it up. And it was so sweet he was trying to learn how to do laundry and chip in more at home when I was swamped with work. Even if he used the wrong bottle. And his mum and sister made a kind of what the fuck faces because I think they knew he knows how to do the laundry and isn't and isn't just learning. 
He's 30, lived at home for a while during college and has lived alone for a while and his whole family must know, he knows how to wash clothes. Primary criticism says not the arsehole, he played and he lost, too bad for him. And one more from space crazy artist who says not the arsehole, he was manipulating you into you doing everything. But once he realized you weren't going to play along and be his mummy, he decided to be an adult. It was a learning experience not being petty. Now, what do you guys make of our first story? How would you handle this if you was in this situation? Would you do the same as OP? Did OP go too far? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from ZucchiniOK217 titled, Am I the asshole for getting upset my boyfriend wouldn't take me to ER? My boyfriend, male 20, and I, female 21, live together at my parents. I've been having some pretty bad UTI symptoms and went to a walking clinic two weeks ago when I had clear signs of a UTI and they sent me home and said I tested negative. I woke up a week later with extreme hip pain. I spent all day on a heating pad and crying. Two more days passed and then I woke up with the worst abdominal pain I've ever had. I began screaming and called my mum. She says to wake up my boyfriend and tell him to take me to the nearby hospital. Seven minutes, that is small, or one that's 35 minutes away that would properly handle what was going on. I wake him up and he says to just sleep it off. At this point, I'm in tears. He says no and I lose that I'm overreacting, which I've been known to do. And it's probably nothing because I tested negative. I feel as if I've been stabbed and this is not the type of pain I can wait out. I even compare how I'm feeling to a possible bladder rupture because of how awful I felt. Finally, he agrees to take me, but only if I let him sleep for two more hours. I understand that if it was some ungodly time, but it was currently 11.30 a.m. And he went to bed at 3 a.m. after playing video games. I explain that I can't wait that long and have no one else home to drive me. He turns over and lays back down. An hour goes by of the worst pain of my life and I decide I will just try to suck it up and drive myself to the nearby ER. I woke him up one more time and I explain that I cannot wait any longer and need to go now because something is wrong. He snaps and says, give him one more hour and lays back down. I storm off in my car and make it about two blocks before I realize I forgot my wallet and I was in no state to drive. As I was literally in so much pain, I couldn't focus. I come home and lay down in the bed beside him as I scream out in pain. He says that I know it takes time for him to wake up and I have no right to get mad. I barely utter out, please take me to the one seven minutes away because I'm scared. I remind him that I've driven two hours at 3 a.m. and no sleep just to pick him up from hospital and spent the whole summer helping him recover from his injury, including bathing and wiping him because he needed me. He argues some more, then finally at 2.30 p.m. takes me to the hospital seven minutes away. It turns out I had an advanced UTI and infection in my bladder and kidneys, as well as a kidney stone that was infected. I felt bad as I recalled my attitude that morning, but I was in a lot of pain. I do recall saying things like, fine, just don't help then, and you're being a dick, in rebuttal to his attitude. Am I the arsehole? Now, there was no way you was going to be the arsehole in this situation, through all of it really. And I put myself in to boyfriend's position and my partner comes up to me and says, oh, screaming in pain and is like really suffering. And I can't imagine turning over like in bed, just rolling over and going, will you pack that in? Just give me a couple more hours of sleep. Then rolling back over and going to sleep. I was just like, what the hell? What goes through that person's mind? And then makes you feel bad at the end because you called him a dick when he was being a dick absolutely not the arsehole to me but essex catwoman says past the kidney stone past the boyfriend not the arsehole you need rid of all these screaming and crying in pain a person who can ignore that is not the one for you i take it a cab etc weren't an option you can't rely on this guy so you need to have alternatives op replies saying nope super small town so no uber etc he was my only option at the time to get the care i needed and he knew that Fem NB says, not the arsehole. You were in pain and asked to go to the hospital. Why your partner didn't hop up like there was a fire under him is concerning and sounds like you need a new boyfriend, one that actually cares about your well-being. Educational Dirto says, not the arsehole. First of all, I hope this is a troll because can such a bad boyfriend exist? Dump the whole man. At least that's what I'd do. What kind of person can ignore their partner who is in this much pain? Also, you said you are known to overreact. Is this something you've actually noticed about yourself? Have people in your life told you that and you tend to do that? Or was it just your boyfriend? OP replies saying, ah, mostly my boyfriend. 
After posting this, kind of starting to make sense to me why he keeps cheating, and I can't get him to stop because it's starting to become clear he doesn't care. Educational Dirty replies that saying he's cheating too. If you stay in this relationship, you're the asshole to yourself. Super Loris says to that, so, oh girl, no, stop. At this point, you're staying in this relationship is self-abuse. This needs to end. To which Opie replies again saying, well, I worded it a bit wrong. He cheated but stopped, but I just feel as if his actions still show he's a piece of shit, lol. I do have lots of issues with self-esteem because I grew up with parents who hated each other and I just don't know what's normal or not in a relationship. But I needed this post as a kind of wake-up call, lol. Sorry if my stupidity is frustrating. I just cannot stand up for myself if I haven't made that clear. Nina replies to that saying, let me guess, he's living with you for free and you do most of the household work too. To which OP replies saying, you're a good guesser. And one more reply from Nina who says, oh babe, we are all rooting for you here. You deserve better. Being alone would be a thousand times better than staying with this guy who doesn't cherish you. A stranger on the street would treat you better than this guy has. Just imagine you kick him out. All of a sudden, you have time to remember what you enjoy doing and that your emotions and reactions have worth and are valid. The messes you clean up are your own. You have more time. You have more energy. You go on dates with people who make you feel excited to be alive. Please update us when you feel better. And honestly, you should just kick him out now because he's not going to make your recovery easier. Since you're always going to be second guessing whether you're really in pain, enough for him to get your glass of water right now. Or he ate up your treats and he won't get you more because he's in the middle of a game slash nap or texting. You're better off just re recovering along and having a regular text check-in with a friend, e.g., Every hour, you text an emoji or something so they know you're alive. And then I was scrolling through the comments hoping for a little bit of positivity here somewhere and I found OP replied saying, this actually pushed me into breaking up with him so there's a little hope left in the world. Sorry to disappoint. And I think we can all say from that, thank goodness in the end. And we know like breaking up with people gets thrown around a lot on Reddit, you know, break up with this person, break up with that person. But surely it has to be valid in this. I mean, in the comments, we found out the guy's cheating randomly as well. Absolutely not the arsehole. But what do you guys make of this situation? What would be your advice to OP? Let us know in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account titled, Am I the arsehole for asking for a roommate change after my former roommate revealed an embarrassing secret? So I, 18 female, am a freshman in college and until recently I loved it. I especially love the social life and the party scene. But I have discovered I have one embarrassing problem when I drink. I wet the bed. It's really humiliating for me and makes me super self-conscious. It's not as though I black out, it's something about alcohol that ruins my bladder control as I sleep. This has happened about five times since I got to school. The third time it happened, my roommate discovered me trying to hide the evidence. I begged her not to tell everyone and thought she was sympathetic. But last week I was eating dinner with friends and we were discussing Halloween plans and one boy made a joke about my bedwetting. I've never been more embarrassed in my life. I sobbed for hours knowing that my whole friend group knows about my problem. I knew my roommate told them because she's literally the only one who knew. I was so angry and embarrassed I left school and my Halloween weekend was spent food shopping with my mum. While I was home, I put in a request for a roommate change because I was so mad at my roommate. She has texted me like a hundred times telling me I'm being dramatic. I think I'm right to never want to talk to her again and she humiliated me in front of my friends, including the boy she knows I have a crush on. Am I the asshole for asking for a change in roommates? And we're going to start with try and be reasonable 14 on this one who says everyone sucks here. The fact that this is just you being unable to hold your liquor, knowing that and drinking too much anyway makes you less sympathetic here. Doing things that you know will make you piss the bed in a shared space with other people is pretty gross and inconsiderate too. If you're drinking to the point of peeing yourself, you're probably partying pretty hard. This along with you saying you love the party scene means you're probably just getting wasted, despite your claims that you don't even black out, which isn't saying much by the way. Everyone has a few too many sometimes, but regularly doing stupid stuff while getting trash gets annoying pretty quick. Empress Jaina Solo says, I hesitated to use everyone sucks here, but as an adult who chooses to drink knowing it will mean wetting the bed, you either think it's a problem or you don't. My guess is your friends who binge drink don't find bed wetting embarrassing because they've also done it or something far worse. However, it bothers you enough that you want to keep it private. Your roommate should have respected that. But if this behavior actually bothers you, then you need to take care of it. See a doctor and stop drinking until you have this under control. 
was your plan to get a new roommate, sit her down, tell her to ignore you peeing the bed in your shared space, and that it will be a constant occurrence because it happens every time you party and you love to party. If drinking and partying is more important to you than sleeping through the night without an accident, then it doesn't matter how much you drink. Your desire to drink is unhealthy. Please stop comparing your drinking habits to your friends and focus on your own health. The ginger cynic says and quotes most of the post and says, so your roommate discovered you wet the bed and went on and told other people. That's an arsehole move, but they found out the third time. You've done it twice more since then, so they're supposed to be okay with sharing a space with you wetting yourself every time you have an alcoholic drink. You need to take responsibility for yourself and take steps to prevent this from happening. Limit your drinks and make sure to sober up entirely before bed. Buy nappies, whatever works. But you're being unfair in assuming whoever you share a space with will have to just deal with it. Everyone sucks here. And quote saying, I put in a request for a roommate change because I was so mad at my roommate. She has texted me like a hundred times, telling me I'm being dramatic and then says, you're trying to punish your roommate for them being uncomfortable. Have you considered that they were maybe complaining and it just came out? If you're unhappy, you move. Edits, I misunderstood somewhat. You'd be the one moving, not your roommate. Let's hope their next roommate is someone they get along with okay. I'm keeping my judgment the same because they should have told people and you should be managing yourself better. And let's have one more from Gothic Armadillo who says, after reading your comments, I'm going with an everyone sucks here. Shitty roommate is obviously shitty, but you are putting your immaturity and lack of individualism on full display. What you are experiencing is a medical issue, and not only do you refuse to take personal responsibility for it, but you actually come up with excuses as to why you should continue drinking with a known problem. You say it shouldn't be an issue because you are the most controlled of all your friends. No the fuck you're not, you're pissing yourself every time. It doesn't matter how drunk you are, how many white claws you had in a six hour period, none of that. You cannot control your body when you drink. There is a reason why nobody else is pissing the bed. That's because this isn't normal. You supposedly can't stop drinking because it's a social pariah. Well, guess what? Plenty of people live fun, fulfilling, sober lives and have an amazing social life without alcohol. If you feel a need to drink alcohol, despite knowing the consequences in order to have fun, then you're developing an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. If your friends push or require that relationship, then guess what? It's time to make better friends. The more confident you are in yourself and what is best for you, the more people will want to hang out with you, for you, and the more you will find people who are open and accepting of you as well. Nobody worth anything has the time or patience for someone who is so insecure in who they are that they feel the need to wreck their body in order to fit in and keep up. Now, what do you guys make of this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another one. And our next story is from All Sewn Up 545 titled, Am I the Asshole for Firing a Guy for Being Late? A guy I manage is always late five to 25 minutes every time. Generally speaking, it's not a big deal and it has no effect on the operation, so I let it slide. These guys work on call, so even the most diligent guys are occasionally five to 10 minutes late. Most just call me and give me a heads up beforehand. However, after noticing a pattern, I spoke to this individual and said, if you're going to be late, I need you to call me. Just let me know, that way I can plan around it. Next time he is on duty, he shows up 25 minutes late. No call. I find him and let him know that he is getting a formal reprimand. And the next time he is late, it will be a 10 day suspension. That's the standard procedure. He tells me he's sorry and it won't happen again. But then two days later, my HR director calls me and says a complaint was filed against me for harassment. The guy was claiming it was the first time he was ever late and it was less than six minutes. Also that I allow everyone else to be late. I explain the scenario to HR, but they are skeptical and make me withdraw my formal reprimand. I'm pissed and I start digging through records and security footage for the past 30 days. I find emails where I documented conversations and five instances of him showing up 30 plus minutes late. I gather this all and send it to HR. They agree to reinstate the formal reprimand, but insist that we go after him for dishonesty and insubordination, both fireable offenses. So unless I withdraw those claims against him in the next seven days, he will remain fired. I am secure in my decision, but I've heard some other guys whispering about me being a hard ass. So am I the asshole? Now, this one's a pretty simple one to me. You know, the guy was turned up late every time and you've been pretty relaxed with the way it is. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I won't go into too much. 
which I understand it's a good thing from their perspective that they get this sort of relaxed atmosphere of coming in. But at the same time, some people like this person will go and take the piss with it and come in late every single day. And when they do finally get pulled up for it, they instead of like saying, I'm really sorry about that, it won't happen again or whatever, they went and lied about you and tried to get you in trouble. So absolutely not. Would you want someone like that who's targeting you working for you? I don't think so. Not the arsehole from me. Holy Roman Emperor says, not the arsehole. Instead of taking the punishment, he tried to have you reprimanded. Ewok Godfather says, not the arsehole. At this point, it's just not the lateness. He chose to escalate by going after you. I think your workplace is better off without a guy like that, to be honest. St. Elvis says, not the arsehole, and quotes, but I insist that we go after him for dishonesty and insubordination, both fireable offenses, and goes on to say, good, he lied. <laughs> Ford Plenty says, not the arsehole. You gave him a warning. Instead of saying, okay, I get it, you are the boss and I will change my behavior, he went to HR and lied, put you in a bad light and said you were harassing him. He thought he could get away with that and bet the farm on the fact that you had no documentation or evidence. That right there is intolerable behavior. And the reward for that is a learning experience that he gets to go and find another job and he doesn't get to use you as a reference since you got him fired for cause. And he doesn't get to collect unemployment. Another thing this is to teach him that HR represents the company, not the supervisor or employee. They will act on evidence and if there is a liability, they will act in the company's best interests. Dusty Process says, not the asshole. Make sure to document everything you do. This guy is going to sue when he gets fired and he's already shown he's willing to lie. Plaintiff's lawyer's dream client. And let's have one more from Unlucky Profession 41 who says, he knowingly lied about you, put your career in jeopardy after all the chances you gave him. He could have swallowed the formal reprimand and done better as an employee, but he decided to be spiteful and lie. So he's got to go. As an aside, why was HR so wishy-washy about the whole thing? Making you rescind the reprimand before doing an investigation into his claim or anything? Hmm not the arsehole. And we will just go with the reply from OP who says it's a union job. And my guess is that they just didn't want to go through the mess of union investigation without rock solid evidence. I'm pro union, but there are definitely guys who know how to work the system to their advantage. This guy has been getting away with stuff for nearly 30 years and probably just felt invincible because it is a giant pain in the ass to get rid of someone in my industry. Now, what do you guys make of this one? I think it can only go one way. But what are your thoughts? Do you have an alternative opinion on this? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and your comments on all of today's stories if you choose to share them. A huge thank you for being involved today. Getting involved in the channel means the absolute world. If you'd like to be awesome, you can come to Twitter at Mark Narrations. You can click subscribe, like the video, even join us through the membership system down below or through Patreon, link in the description or hugely helps out, but again, never any pressure to do so. Thank you so much for your love, your support, and your time. And I will see you, your cheeky so-and-so, in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum.